I mean, the first thing about this is when I picked the title, I didn't, I sort of called it B2B Better, then I saw everyone else's title and I've been like, oh, I've not been descriptive enough at all, you can't actually tell what I'm going to talk about. So what I am going to talk about is um, a beta launch of, the new of a Mercedes website that went live last year, and particularly around like, the analytics behind it and the kind of processes and steps we went through. So first of all, I was originally going to call this, um, I can't believe it's not beta, but they were like, oh, it, it sounds like I can't believe it's not better, which made it, could have been quite negative. If you don't like a pun, this is going to be a long 18 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm Philip Law, I work at your favourite story, uh, it's a digital analytics agency. Um, I do have a PhD in modelling complex systems, which I basically used to do um, modelling the heart, cardiology, stuff like that. So I am just somehow ended up in web analytics. So, <laughs> okay, so I'll move along. So what, what's the story here? So we've got an old web, the old Mercedes website. Um, so just to give a background, it's this the old Mercedes website was it was created in 2003. Um, it was originally built on CQ4, like a very, very old system, and actually only got replaced last year. And to give a bit of context, this was operating in 100 different markets, and over 200 different retailers were using this. So it was a big project. Um, but one of the, one of the, so they thought it was time for a change. I think one of the issues is that the website it was good in its day, but it was only really offering this vanilla experience um, and people have talked a lot about personalization, making things like custom to the customer. And you just couldn't do that in the website. So they need to update. And what they want to update is a new, new version of AM, what I'm calling the Neapolitan experience. Do you remember those? I call it like the I argument ice cream, where you get to it, someone has destroyed all the chocolate out in the middle, and you've got to kind of work through them. Can anyone remember that? <laughs> okay, so what are going to do? The new website. We're going to do it in the late um, AEM. It's going to be all singing, all dancing. We're going to have all the new Adobe products, all the Adobe products to do personalization. It's going to be great. And this is kind of the story we went through of how we actually were the pilot market in this and how we actually did it from an analytics point of view. So I've cut this into three mini sections. Yeah, three mini sections. I kind of want each one to kind of be compartmentalized. I'm going to talk a little about the planning and some of the thought processes about how we did this because it was all new to it. You don't really launch a beta site very often, especially on a big, huge website like Mercedes. Um, the second part, so we're going to talk about the planning. And we all know if you don't do any planning, you end up with a terrible season. Um, data, hy <laughs> data hygiene. Um, this was very important to us, and I'll talk about why this. Just how we actually collected the data and actually made sure the tagging on the website was correct. This ended up being like a huge issue for us and how we solved that problem. And finally, the monitoring. So when we were actually running the beta, how did we actually know we were doing okay? And how did we know we were going to, like, actually, the new website was going to be better than the older website? Okay, so the first section, like, planning. So I think one of the things about this is, so uh, one of my personal beefs is, like, when I go shopping, my local supermarket moves the eggs all, of, all the time, and it really annoys me. Like, change annoys me. And this is one of the main issues when launching a new website is people hate change. Can anyone remember when the old BBC website changed the new BBC website? It was absolute uproar, absolute uproar. It was on the news. <laughs> I think I remember, Trevor McDonald, I can't remember who it was. Yeah, it's people hate change. So that's the first thing. So if you're going to change your website, you're potentially going to annoy your customer. The second thing is what kind of scares people is the Marks and Spencers. This was probably like four or five years ago when they launched a new website. And just all their everything just tanked and it was in the news, loads of bad press about it. So people had that in their mind as well. And there are numerous other stories of this of people just launching websites and then just bombing. All the, yeah. So, and I think this is a Mercedes example. They got quite burned by this as well. So um, around the time, God, it must have been 2008, 2009, one of the big things on a, on a car website is the car configurator. And they used to have an old car configurator. And they rebuilt, and this was around the time the iPad was coming out, and they rebuilt the entire car configurator in Flash. They launched it, and it was just, people like hated it. Yeah, thank, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, so they've been burned. It's got to be careful. That's the basic crux of it here. So just to give you an idea of the launch timeline and what actually happened, the year before, in 2017, we were actually the pilot. So we ran a pilot of one model, one section of the website. Um, 
that was interesting and that was where we got a lot of our lessons for because that was was a good good project but very very challenging <laughs> and the second thing the actual rollout the global rollout began in 2018 and we had eight week launch cycle so we had to launch at the end of those eight weeks so when you're launching a website it actually turns out there's like three options for doing this you do the big bang that's what Marks and Spencer's did they just built their website and just pushed it out there the second one is section by section we kind of go if you're a grocery store or Tesco or something I'm going to do my groceries I'm going to do my next section I'm going to do my next section and the third one it's like a phased beta where they kind of um, give you a little bit test it out see how it goes and goes through stages so can I just ask you a quick poll of poll here who would go if you're launching a new website for the big bang yeah. who would go section by section interesting and who would go for the phase beta yeah. interesting interesting because they want so bit of an argument we were originally go section by section and eventually we had to go phase beta but what it comes down to is the big bang is easier for the business just get up there get it out move on to the next thing whereas the phase beta is better for the customer in my in the well what's we ended up thinking so what it's all come down to was risk mitigation like we want to make sure that when it goes live we're not gonna we're not gonna have any drops in stats yeah I've still got plenty of time so we have to ask ourselves what did we want to do a phase beta so we decided we were going to ask ourselves what did we want to what did the beta what is the purpose of running a beta and there was three main questions we wanted to answer there was one does yeah does the site work it goes to goes to a certain number of traffic is data coming in are we collecting stuff can people navigate the site can it take the load the second phase is are our KPIs going to tank? Is this going to impact conversions? And the third one is a much bigger. It has our original design decision. It was a big decision. We redesigned the website uh, with Mercedes. And are our original design decision going to have an impact? So what we did is we worked out that we split into three phases. Phase one, which was 5%. Phase two, which is 25% of traffic. And phase three, which was a giant AB beta, where we just sent everything to each channel. Uh, sorry, each. 50% to each of the new website. Now, this splitting of traffic sounds relatively straightforward, but actually it's quite complicated because once you do this through a load balancer, so someone visits your website, it goes, OK, visiting, send one to the A, website A, one to website B. But actually, this is where we spent most of our time planning because a lot of questions come up, like how are you going to handle campaigns? Because originally we were like, well, we're going to stop all our campaigns while we're doing this to get a fair test. They were like, no, we're going to keep going. Um, if you're a select site A and B, do you just become a person at uh, website A and a website B forever? Or do you just flip between the two? Does it reset? Because then you're going to start to skew to one or the other. Should you have the option to flip between the beta side? That little try beta button, that was a nightmare because then it that kind of contaminates your test. You're going to click on that button, go to the next one. And you know, but you know, that's another good question. Um, also, where do you load balance to? This is the other thing that old websites tend to have a lot of web pages, but new websites tend to be like all these little like single page app stuff. So there's a lot less pay pay there's a lot less pages. So you're gonna have to try and map, and we had to map nearly five thousand pages manually to the new pages. Okay. Right. So that's the first. So that's kind of like planning, rough planning we did next stage is like the tag hygiene so the first thing in the pilot the tracking sucked it was awful we went, it went live and we were just it, it, it was bad we couldn't really report on anything so in a standard deployment this is what should happen so the deployments push live the analyst would test the tracking they give you the thumbs up go yep yeah, yep yeah, we can do that we wait to collect data a certain amount of time, then we report on performance, how it's doing. What was actually happening was, stage two, the analyst would check the tracking, we'd create a bug list of everything that was wrong, and it would then go to fix the bugs, which go back, and then it would go in this loop. And each one of these loops took a week. So effectively, it would go live, and it was really like a week before we could figure out what was going on. And that was one of the biggest lessons from the pilot. Like, the tagging testing was like the most important thing. 
The second thing we learned was the, as soon as it's pushed live, there's quite a lot of questions like, how is it doing? Like almost instantaneously, it's like, oh, how do we, how is it doing? Like, is it, is it better, is it worse? So, these are kind of just rough KPIs that we do. These aren't all of them, but kind of an example of the kind of KPIs we have on the website and what to monitor. So, one of the things was, is the way we test manually, who here like tests quite manually of the tags, like have like an, I know not all web analysts, but you go in, you click around, go yeah, good, good, that's great. That's the way we did it. And we had an analyst, it took us out in the pilot, we had one analyst just testing constantly for four weeks, that's all they were doing. And they hated me. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so I think one of the things, I don't want to make this sound like a sales pitch, but this was like the solution it went for, these observe point guys. Um, so I kind of want to think like a quick run through of how to do it. So what this is, it's kind of like a spider and you kind of set it up and it does two things. It kind of crawls your site and it gives you a big tag report of what's on there. And the other thing you can do is you can um, do journeys as well which is particularly useful for like a test drive form. So we decided, we did a research, we did a little pilot with them. We decided, okay, we're gonna go for this because we've got an eight week window to launch this. We don't have time. We just can't afford to not, not uh, do this. So I'm just gonna run a few things of like it. So it's quite easy to use. So what you basically do is you go in, you have like these little audits. Um, what you do is you configure an audit. So effectively all you do is a little tile you go in, you put the URL in, and then you click it and off it goes. There's a lot more complex complexity to this, but you can actually scan your site relatively quickly within a few hours. And what it does is actually like, it does all these things like gives you an order overview of like all the tags on your site. Crucially, the interest these tools always give these little dashboards where they give like a uh, score out of 100. Excuse me. Um, but the interesting ones, we were interesting, was tag presence. Like it just tells you all the tags that are on your website. Um, this isn't Mercedes, by the way, this is someone else. And that was really, really interesting for us. We could see like loads of bad tags on our website and tags we didn't know why they were there. Um, but okay, this was the crucial bit, and this is why I mentioned the KPIs. Um, what you can actually do is you can set it up, for example, what we need to do is make sure the tags are working for our core KPIs when it ran. And what you kind of do is you can go in. This is a single Adobe tag fire. You can go in, you can kind of click on it and go, okay, I'm going to set up a rule that this has to be an EVAR or a custom variable and it must complain any of these strings. And you can configure it, you can set it to run every single day and it runs within a few hours. So once you've got it set up, you can just run it and it just tells you if anything's wrong. And this was like invaluable for us. So that, this got rid of this whole one week lag we reduced this down to like a few hours. So it's quite a good, quite a good, uh, yeah. It's right. Final section, like reporting and monitoring. So we learned a lot of lessons from the first, from the pilot. And that main lesson was that we need to have a plan on how we're gonna report on this. We need to set expectations. And we need to basically have a, yeah, a really robust plan of like the stages and set rules of, go, okay, it's stage one, stage one's good, we can move to stage two, stage two is stage three, we want stage three. So, so coming back to the beta, beta phase, we've got, to, ah, sorry, cover this again. Um, so we've got to decide, and, and in the phase one, when to go to phase two, when, when phase two is good, when to go to phase three, and then we need to use these reports to make that decision. So coming back again, it's all about risk mitigation. Sample KPIs, okay, so, what we did in terms of reporting is come up with this like reporting timeline where we'd effectively say at day one we're going to do this report, day two we're going to do this, after the first half a week we're going to do this. And this was good for us, but this was really for kind of like the people actually in the day to day on the project to kind of have an overview who were making the actual decisions of when to go live. But the other kind of thing that we really kind of wanted was some kind of real time reporting on yeah, some real-time reporting on how are things performing. So what we did is we ended up taking this like real, this like basically create a kind of real-time dashboard in Tableau. So effectively, what we wanted to know is how are four KPIs doing? So we put like little red and green dots in to go, oh, they're good or bad. And also each day, how is our traffic splitting? So you see on this example, it says 50% traffic. 
So in each state it's 42, 45, 46. So we really use this to like monitor and anyone can check it at any time. So I'm just going to talk about how we did this from a technical point of view. So one of the things here is, um, so all we use Adobe, Adobe Analytics. Um, one of the things was how do we connect Adobe, how do we connect Tableau to, to Adobe to do the report? Because at the time there wasn't, an, I don't know if there is now, it wasn't a native connect, uh, connector to Adobe. And also in all of our KPIs we do loads of filtering and levels and stuff. So what we ended up doing is we had a rep Adobe report builder, which is kind of an Excel plugin. It would run, it would run, it would then FTP that file to um, an Amazon server. So when we originally did design for this, we bought Tableau Online, because I, I said the Tableau line, I said, I want to connect Tableau Online to an FTP server, can you do that? And the sales guy said yes. So I bought it, and it cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that was an, <laughs> I knew that lesson, I learned that before, but I just, I don't know why I just believed him. So what, what we have to do is this absolutely ridiculous process. So we had an Amazon EC2, we delivered to an FTP, then a script ran on that FTP and uploaded it to as Amazon S3, which is just like, like um, I guess I saw it like a long-term file server storage thing. Uploaded to that. Once you've got that, once it's on S3, you can then use Amazon Athena, which is effectively something that can just query S3, and you can just build your own queries in it, which we're just querying like a flat file. And finally, Tableau could then connect to Amazon Athena and upload it. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking this is actually quite a ridiculous process, but we built this in like four days. <laughs> so we just boshed it out as quickly as we could because we knew after the eight weeks we were going to just bin it. Um, <laughs> it, was just, it was just a one-off report for that thing, so we just boshed it together, did it. This S3 Amazon Athena thing was horrible. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, we had this dashboard, went through, it was... Yeah. Ooh, yeah. So that's the kind of how we kind of did the dashboard and kind of how we made it look all right. Look at that. Five seconds. <laughs>